Today, it's all about the money. If you want to advance your career or just be able to talk about money with your English-speaking friends and or family, it's important to know what these words mean. What is money called when you get it from the bank to finance your house? And what's the money called that you give to your kids? Or when you get a divorce and you pay money to your ex-partner? In every single case, money has a different name. So today, we're going to have a look at these financial terms which are absolutely vital to know if you want to advance your career or navigate an international environment and we'll have a look at them across five different key areas. Firstly, we will delve into the world of banks and look at financial terms that are connected with them. Next, we'll examine the social aspect, by which I mean what is money called if one person gives it to another. Then, we'll step into the academic realm and have a look at what money terms there are if we deal with universities and colleges. After that, we'll uncover terms that deal with illegal activities. And lastly, we'll explore the money terms that have to do with the workplace. By the end of this video, you will have a comprehensive understanding of these terms. Let's delve into the financial world. So what's the money called you give to a bank when you use their services? This is called bank fees or in German, die Bankgebühren. Here's an example sentence. I was charged $10 for bank fees on my monthly statement. Mir wurden $10 Bankgebühr auf meinem monatlichen Kontoauszug berechnet. If you owe someone money, especially the bank, but not only, also if you owe your friend money, you would say you are in debt. Please make sure not to pronounce the B, debt. For example, she struggled to pay off her credit card debt. Sie hatte Schwierigkeiten, ihre Kreditkartenschulden abzuzahlen. Number three, if you borrow money from the bank and you have to pay it back with interest, Zinsen, then you take out a loan. Einen Kredit. So you could say, they applied for a loan to buy a new car. Sie haben einen Kredit beantragt, um ein neues Auto zu kaufen. Number four. If you own parts of a company, which means you are a shareholder, the money that is paid out to you is called a dividend. Dividende. For example, shareholders received a generous dividend payout. Aktionäre erhielten eine großzügige Dividendenausschüttung. If you want to buy a house and the bank helps you finance it, and you have to pay this kind of money back, it's called a mortgage. Please make sure not to pronounce the T, mortgage. Example sentence. They took out a mortgage to finance their dream home. Sie haben eine Hypothek aufgenommen, um ihr Traumhaus zu finanzieren. Number six. Let's say you borrow money from the bank and then you pay it back every month, bit by bit. This is called an installment, die Rate. For example, he paid the installment for his new laptop every month. Er zahlte jeden Monat die Rate für seinen neuen Laptop. So let's move on to the part where money is given socially from one person to another or to organizations. Let's start out with donation. This is money you give to a charity, such as a religious organization or any other charity for this matter. Example sentence. The charity received a generous donation from a local business. Die Wohltätigkeitsorganisation erhielt eine großzügige Spende von einem lokalen Unternehmen. If someone is incredibly rich or maybe not that rich, but someone has some assets or some money and they die, and then you get the assets or the money. This is called an inheritance, das Erbe. So you could say, she inherited a large sum of money from her grandmother. Sie erbte eine große Geldsumme von ihrer Großmutter. If you give money to your children or maybe also to your spouse on a monthly basis, let's say, this is called pocket money, which you would use more with kids or a more elaborate term is allowance. For example, my parents give me a weekly allowance for doing chores. Meine Eltern geben mir wöchentlich Taschengeld für die Erledigung von Aufgaben. Let's say your marriage broke up, you get a divorce and then you need to pay out money to your ex-partner. This is called alimony. Der Unterhalt. For example, he was ordered to pay alimony to his ex-wife after the divorce. Er wurde angewiesen, seiner Ex-Frau nach der Scheidung Unterhalt zu zahlen. If in this fictitious scenario there is not only an ex-partner but there are also kids involved, then you pay child support, which would be the British term, or child maintenance, which is the American word. Unterhalt für das Kind. Here's an example sentence. The court ordered her to pay child support or child maintenance 
for her children. Das Gericht ordnete an, dass sie Unterhalt für ihre Kinder zahlen muss. Let's move on to the world of academia. What's the money called given from one place to another when we are in this realm of colleges and universities? If you give money to an educational institution because you learn something from them, this is called a fee, die Gebühr. I had to pay a registration fee to enroll in the course. Ich musste eine Anmeldegebühr bezahlen, um mich für den Kurs einzuschreiben. If there is a student who is especially gifted, be it that they learn really fast or maybe they are really good at playing football, for example, then this student can get a scholarship, ein Stipendium. So all expenses or a lot of the expenses are paid for by the scholarship. For example, she was awarded a full scholarship to attend university due to her outstanding academic achievements. Sie erhielt ein volles Stipendium aufgrund ihrer herausragenden akademischen Leistungen. If, on the other hand, the student just doesn't have the money to go to university, because we know in America and in England and other places, studying is just incredibly expensive, then this student could apply for a grant. In Germany, our system is quite different, so grant would be closest to our BAföG. But generally speaking, a grant is money that is given to a student if they cannot afford to go to an educational institution. Here is an example sentence. Students can receive a grant to help cover their tuition and living expenses while attending university. Studierende können ein Stipendium erhalten, um ihre Studiengebühren und Lebenshaltungskosten während des Studiums zu decken. If money is given to someone who comes to the university to teach, for example, one class or maybe even one lecture, but this person is not an employee of the university, they are given a so-called honorarium. In German, ein Honorar. So you could say, the speaker received an honorarium for delivering a keynote address at the conference. Der Redner erhielt ein Honorar für den Vortrag einer Keynote Speech auf der Konferenz. If money is given to someone winning a competition, this is called an award or because it's a monetary prize, award money. Das Preisgeld. She won the writing competition and received a significant amount of award money. Sie hat den Schreibwettbewerb gewonnen und eine bedeutende Geldsumme als Preisgeld erhalten. We are now entering the world of crime. So if money changes its owner illegally, there are also some important terms you should really know and be aware of. If you want to get a favor from a person of influence and in order to get this favor you give them money, this is called a bribe, Bestechungsgeld. The politician was caught accepting a bribe in exchange for influencing policy decisions. Der Politiker wurde dabei erwischt, wie er Bestechungsgeld annahm, um politische Entscheidungen zu beeinflussen. Money that is given to a kidnapper is called a ransom, das Lösegeld. The kidnappers demanded a large sum of money as ransom for the safe release of the hostage. Die Entführer verlangten eine große Geldsumme als Lösegeld für die sichere Freilassung der Geisel. If you want to buy someone's son, Silence, this money is called hush money because we say hush hush shh, don't say anything hush money das Schweigegeld. So you could say, the celebrity paid hush money to keep their relationship secret from becoming public. Der Prominente zahlte Schweigegeld, um seine skandalöse Beziehung geheim zu halten. You might know this from movies about the mafia. Sometimes there are people who tell you they're gonna do harm to your business if you don't give them money. In German that would be das Erpressungsgeld or das Schutzgeld. In English this is called extortion fee. An example sentence could be, the criminal demanded an extortion fee to prevent damaging the business reputation. Der Kriminelle verlangte Erpressungsgeld, um den Ruf des Unternehmens nicht zu schädigen. And the last money term in our illegal category is called embezzlement. Embezzlement means that you misuse funds you are responsible for. In German, die Unterschlagung. The accountant was arrested for embezzlement after stealing company money. Der Buchhalter wurde wegen Unterschlagung festgenommen, nachdem er Gelder des Unternehmens veruntreut hatte. And we are moving on to our last category. Category number five, money exchange in the workplace. If you have a regular job, you go to work and then monthly you get money, this is called a salary. Das Gehalt. For example, she received a monthly salary for her work as a teacher. Sie erhielt ein monatliches Gehalt für ihre Arbeit als Lehrerin. If, on the other hand, you work in a job which pays less or you are paid hourly, this would be called a wage, der Lohn. Mindestlohn in English would be minimum wage. So you could say, he earned an hourly wage for his job at the factory. Er verdiente einen Stundenlohn für seine Arbeit in der Fabrik. If you go to a restaurant and the service is outstanding, 
ending, or even if it isn't, usually I think you will give a tip to the waiter. Das Trinkgeld. The waiter received a generous tip for providing excellent service. Der Kellner erhielt ein großzügiges Trinkgeld für seinen ausgezeichneten Service. We've made it to the last but one term, and this is what money is called when given to an artist, be it a musician or a painter or an author. If your work is sold, then an artist receives royalties. Tantiemen. The author earned royalties from the sales of her book. Die Autorin erhielt Tantiemen aus dem Verkauf ihres Buches. And our very last word today from the world of finance and money is the money you get as an employee that is extra. So as an employee you would get regular payments but sometimes maybe for the Christmas season or because you are an especially good salesperson you would get extra money. In English this kind of money is called a bonus or a bonus payment. We could say 13. Monatsgehalt or die Gehaltszulage. The company awarded a year-end bonus to its employees for their outstanding performance. Das Unternehmen hat seinen Mitarbeitern für ihre herausragende Leistung einen Bonus zum Jahresende gewährt. And that concludes our exploration of key terms across five different areas. We've covered the financial world, social aspects, academia, illegal activities and the workplace. By familiarizing yourself with these terms, you'll be better equipped to navigate various professional and personal situations involving money. If you haven't done so yet but you think this video was valuable maybe give it a thumbs up subscribe and to this channel i would really appreciate it keep mastering these money terms see you in the next video bye